No. I didn't even yeah, recognize this place, the first I don't. <laughs> no. I recognize the the riot shield. Uh, 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 Oh, okay. First day he came home, we were. I think that I think that might be one of the ones there too. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. And I, I just saw a reference of my We're gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, grab a chair. <laughs> Be in the sun or the shade? Either one's fine. Okay. <laughs> Jordan, did you help me? So we're gonna we're gonna get started, and what we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna pray for the Beardsleys and Archer Ruzik, and then we're gonna uh, have a couple of uh, songs of worship, and then we're gonna take communion as a church family. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, bow our hearts and our our heads to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day where your body can come together, Lord, and worship you, draw from your strength and your power, Lord. So we just approach you right now with a, with a heart that is submitted, a spirit, Lord God, that is hungry for your presence. And so, Father, as we gather, Lord, we just lift up uh, Lyle and Margie Beardsley, Lord God, as they have uh, illness, Lord, and they're in Arizona, Father. I just pray for wisdom and healing over their body. Lord God, we thank you for them and their heart, Lord, for the church, Lord, and to see people just uh, experience the fullness of Christ. So, Father, we just ask that you would meet with your son and your daughter today, Lord God, and I pray for healing over their body, Lord. And we also list, uh, lift up the Ruzics, uh, particularly Archer, Father, and we just ask that you would bring healing to his heart, Lord, and his body. And, Father, as the doctors gather this Monday, Lord, to decide... What is the next step of uh, best course of action, Lord God? We just ask that you give them wisdom, Father, on how to handle this, Lord. And we just ask for healing over this, mm -hmm. this little boy's body, Father. And that it would be a testimony of your goodness and your love, Father. I, I lift up Jesse and Olivia and Jack, Father. I pray that you would encourage their soul, Lord God. That you would strengthen them. That, you, that your peace, Father, would be with them in this moment. And we know that they are exhausted and that they've experienced uh, a long journey uh, in these past three months, Father. And we just ask that you would strengthen them and encourage their soul, Father. Help them to keep their eyes fixed on you. And Father, as we gather today, Lord, you know the needs that we have. Father, we lay them at your feet. And we thank you that you have a sovereignty and a love for us that will not fail. So, Father, may we keep our eyes this morning, Lord, on things that are above and not things that are below. Encourage our souls, Lord. And, Father, as we worship your name, may you be glorified. And may we be healed. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so we're not mics today, so we're going to need a lot of your help for this. So... Feel free to sing it out with us as we worship this morning. Sing, we stand. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down.
together we sing, everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth
thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are present, Lord God, and that you are the head of the church. Father, I pray that each one of us, Lord, would experience your sovereign love this morning. That we would know that, Lord, you are enough. You are sufficient. So as we gather, Lord, I pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people, Lord God. Open our ears and our hearts, Lord, to receive all that you want to say to us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I just uh, want to share a quick devotion before we take communion. As a church, and I was thinking this week about the nature of the body of Christ. And I also was thinking about what's going on in our community and in our culture. And I think in general, humanity feels very lonely. Humanity feels misunderstood. And it can create quite a bit of anger. And I believe the answer is Jesus. I also was thinking about the nature of the church. And one of the things about the church I think is a great danger is that we take the movement of Jesus and we institutionalize it. We institutionalize it. And yes, you see in Scripture, in Timothy, and in Titus, you see church government and all that, but it's, it's, it, it's not an institution, it's an organism. And so the church is supposed to be keeping the flavor of the first century of being communal. So it's not about the institution of the church. Yes, there's government and organization and those things, but we must not lose the individual responsibility that makes a church a church. And what do I mean by that? One of the most interesting things that you see if you scour the New Testament is that there's these statements, and there are one another statements. One another statements. And so I'm going to read these one another statements, and I want you to listen to these. And the thing about the one another statements, it's not talking about the pastor or a hierarchy that is supposed to do all this. The one another statements is a statement to you and me who believe in Jesus. And so let me read these. And I want to share a thought, and then we're going to take communion together. Starting in Mark, it says, Be at peace with each other, one another. Wash one another's feet, talking about service. Love one another. John 13 says, Love one another again. John 13 says, Love one another again. John 15, Love one another. John 15, 17, Love one another. Romans says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Romans 12, honor one another above yourselves. Live in harmony with one another. Love one another. Stop, stop passing judgment on one another. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. Instruct one another. Greet one another with a holy kiss. When you come together to eat, wait for one another. Have equal concern for each other. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 25. Greet one another with a holy kiss, 1 Corinthians 16. Greet one another with a holy kiss. It's talking about being hospitable to your brothers and sisters. It's talking about close relationship and communion with one another. Continuing on, 2 Corinthians 13, 12. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Serve one another in love. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, you will be destroyed by one another. Galatians 5. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying one another. Carry one another's burdens. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Ephesians 4 says, forgiving one another. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's Ephesians 5. All these phrases are different scriptures. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In humility, consider one another better than yourselves. 
Do not lie to one another. Bear with one another or each other. Forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Teach one another. Admonish one another. Make your love increase and overflow for one another. Love one another. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. Build one another up, each other up. Encourage one another daily. Spur one another towards love in good deeds. Encourage one another. Do not slander one another. Do not grumble against each other. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for one another. Love one another deeply from the heart. Live in harmony with one another. Love each other deeply. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has to receive to, re receive to serve one another. Clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Greet one another with a holy kiss in love. Love one another. Love one another. This is 1 John 4. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. That's 59 verses about one another. Why? Because the church was never intended to be institutionalized. When something is institutionalized, the responsibility is now taken and put on the leading, leading organization. So it's almost like spiritual welfare system where you're reliant on the government in place but not participant in the economy of the spiritual life of the body of Christ. I think that's one of the grave dangers of the Western church because we've become such an individualistic society, miserable, feeling alone, feeling angry, feeling misunderstood. If you look at the suicide rates in our country, if you look at the marches that suggest racism, that means I am not loved. And you know what the world needs? A one another. So the responsibility of the church is our responsibility to encourage, to teach, to love, to challenge, to endure with each other. And when you live in an instant when you live in a society that's institutionalized, you know who is number one? Me. I have to get my benefits my rights and if you approach the body of Christ like a welfare system like a spiritual welfare system we're all going to be broken poor spiritually but when we take on the responsibility and we're contributors to a society to to this living organism that we call the body of Christ then we enrich one another by our presence not seeking to get but to serve and to give that doesn't withdraw us from our needs, the challenges of life, but we do not neglect our responsibility. And so when we say, you know what, Your, my faith is not my own. My faith is, is, is led by Christ, but also my faith impacts those that are around me. That's what the one another statements mean. To be Christ to one another. To show the glory of God to one another. To encourage one another in Christ's likeness. In a world of such hatred, the gospel preaches love one another. That we're all equals. There is no Jew, no Gentile, no male, no female. We're all even in the body of Christ. But we're also evenly responsible in the body of Christ and for the body of Christ. So my prayer for our church family and the church in the West is that we would be people that take on responsibility. Not seeking what we can get as much as what we can give in faith. 
And as you serve and as you give and as you love one another, you'll mature and you'll be strengthened and you'll be blessed. And also you, you focus on serving the Lord for His glory, but you also have a sense of His sovereign love for your issues and your needs as well. And He shows up and you're healed as well. So as we take communion this morning... I was thinking about Paul's instructions in 1 Corinthians when he told them to take communion. He tells them in 1 Corinthians 11, he says that whenever we take communion, that we ought to examine ourselves. That we ought to examine ourselves, and not just ourselves, but our relationships. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Right before that, he says, whoever eats and drinks uh, the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves. And so... We must examine ourselves. Jesus, even in one of his teachings in Matthew chapter 5, talked about an offering. And he says, if, if you have a conflict with a brother or sister, before you give your offering, go in and reconcile. Leave your offering there, but reconcile before you take it so you're not giving this superficial offering. I also think it's interesting that when Jesus... In uh, John chapter 13, at the Last Supper, when Jesus goes ahead and he takes the Last Supper with his, with his um, disciples, you know one of the things that he did as an illustration was that's where he did the foot washing. To illustrate that you are to wash each other's feet and serve one another. Why did he decide to do that in the time of communion? Because he understands that the church is not intended to be an institution it's intended to be a living organism where Christ dwells in the center. So let's pray. We're going to take a moment just where you can um, examine yourselves before the Lord. Think about your role in the body of Christ. Think about your faith. How are you holding up your end of the bargain of loving one another? teaching one another, encouraging one another. Because if that's not your focus, most likely you're going to fill it with something else, criticizing one another, hating one another. Something will fill the void. So let's just take a moment before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. You call us to participate in the life of Jesus. I thank you that you don't call us just to sit and be passive observers, but Father, you want us to experience the fullness of God. And Father, with experience, that means that we have to participate. And Lord, that participation sometimes is very difficult. It requires us to learn how to die to self. Father, I pray that you would teach us how to die well so we could live well. That we could love well. 
Lord, we all have faults, and I thank you for your grace. I thank you that this lesson, Lord, is a lesson that is a lifelong lesson. That you are with us. Help us to run this race well. As we look to the cross and your great love for us, your great fellowship you offer us, you said with your body, this is my body that was broken for us. I thank you for that. I thank you that, Father, in a very specific way, you died for each person in this, in this gathering, Lord. Each person, whether they acknowledge your existence or not, Father, you have laid your body bare, broken for them, for us, for me. With all of our faults and inadequacies, Lord, you have become adequate. So we take this bread broken for us in remembrance of you. Father, I thank you for this cup that symbolizes the new covenant in Christ. I thank you that we have full access to the Father now because of you. That you've covered a multitude of sins, Lord, that were stained, Lord God. But you've made them white as snow. We take this cup in remembrance of you, in honor of you, in celebration of the life that we have now in you. Help us to live it well, Lord Jesus, for your glory. Let's partake of the cup, church. Amen. Oh, amen. I encourage you to think about the nature of the church. The nature of the church. But one another's statements, not only an invitation for us to come and be healed, but to participate in the healing. Participate in the healing. And I will tell you, every single one of us can just grow in that aspect of participation. I can, when I examined myself even just a minute ago, I could just think of things where I need to love better. I need to love better. And so let's just take on that responsibility of being participants in the healing of Jesus Christ, not just recipients. We love you, church, and uh, I'm glad you guys are here. We have all this food that you guys made. The only reason I asked to gather is because I was going to be hungry, and I like barbecue. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, though, is real fast, I want us to hold up on going to the table, Sophia. <laughs> if you're serving, you can go. But you'll notice that maybe there are people among us that are only going to come because we're outside. What I want to do is I want to give us five minutes to let people that may be a little bit more at risk for the COVID to go ahead and grab a meal. They can grab that real quick, and we're going to wait and just fellowship. And then I will tell you when we can go ahead and grab a meal. So if you want to go ahead and grab something real fast, if that's you, go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the rest of you guys you can get in line. So let's just hold off for a moment.